Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing this super easy zebra print tumbler. As always, I'll make sure to put everything I use today into the description box below so that way you guys can purchase those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. So today I'm just going to be using a straight skinny with a handle. I went ahead and I prepped it and I primed it the champagne mist. I didn't have a rose gold paint, so any type of like champagne would go really well with a rose gold glitter. Now I'm going to be using the epoxy method to adhere my glitter down to my tumbler today. Now typically whenever you use a fine cut glitter, you want to use a very small amount of epoxy, but because I'm using a chunky glitter today, I'm going to be applying almost five milliliters of my epoxy to my tumbler so that way my glitter becomes nice and flat for me and I don't have to worry about fussing around with it too much when it comes to coating it with that epoxy after this has cured. And make sure you don't forget your handle. If you are using a handle, you just want to wipe it down really well and make sure everything is nice and smooth and coated so that way our glitter has something to adhere to. And after that's done, we are ready to go ahead and load on our glitter. Now the glitter I'm going to be using today is called Gilded Rose and this is actually the very first glitter I sold at SOC Glitters. This is what started my glitter company. So this is this is uh, fun that I'm, I'm going to be using it. I feel like I haven't used it in a while. So but you can purchase that obviously at socglitters.com if you would like to. <laughs> so we're just doing a full coat of this glitter right onto our tumbler base. So the only real tips and tricks I really have for getting it nice and smooth is first off, making sure you use about five milliliters of epoxy. I found that five milliliters for this particular size, 20, 20 ounce tumbler uh, is, is a very good proportion of epoxy for my chunky glitter. And then taking it and sprinkling it on in this fashion rather than dumping it on, I find works the best as well because I can just lightly come through and sprinkle it on and then I let it kind of sink in and then I'll come in and just kind of fill anything back fill anything in that needs to be filled in but I like to have a little bit more control over it and that really helps out especially around these handles and everything just a very light sprinkling of it until it, it's filled in to the point that you would like it to be filled in all right she's all filled in and I'm just going to switch hands here and I'm going to take my opposite hand with that has the glove on it and I'm just going to come through and make sure that everything is squished down real good as you can see I don't really need to do too much with it it's already laid pretty flat for me I'm just going to come through and make sure that any glitters that might be a nuisance on the handle I just go ahead and take them off there I'll also go ahead and come through and push anything back up off the rim as well and just continue to push down anything that is kind of poking up as I go through. Now, because I used about five milliliters, I go ahead and place it on my turner to cure it just to make sure nothing slips, just in case, you know, just as a precaution. I'm gonna go ahead and let that cure and then we're ready to add that a coat of epoxy over the raw glitter. Now, before I apply my coat, my first coating of epoxy over top here, I went ahead and I sprayed it down with my two times ultra. That just really helps out with this epoxy wicking, wicking there we go, away off of our metallic glitter. I'm going to go ahead and apply 20 milliliters of epoxy over top of my raw glitter. I like to do smaller proportions of, of epoxy for my layers. This helps out with bulging at the top and the bottom. It also helps out with micro bubbles because the layering isn't so thick and it lets those bubbles release faster to the top rather than getting sunk down into portions that got bubbled up because there was just too much epoxy. Now after you apply this layer and it has cured and you just realize it needs another coating of epoxy because it might be too lumpy for you, go ahead and put another coat of epoxy over top of that if you need to to make sure you have a nice smooth surface for what we're going to be doing next. And of course after I apply my epoxy I'm going to place it onto my turner and I'm going to hit it up really good with my blowtorch and let that cure. Now while that cures we're going to go ahead and get some of our decals cut out. So for our base, we're going to be using the zebra print, and I'm going to be doing a the peekaboo method with this. The reason why I'm doing the peekaboo method with it is because I figure you could even use this on a curvy tumbler. If you cut everything apart, you can do piece, you know, segment by segment and kind of lay it down if you want to. So I just want to show you guys how easy it is just to do the peekaboo with it, or you could have it cut out exactly and use your vinyl as, as uh, your stripes as well. But again, like I said, no, ma no matter what you want to do, I know you guys got this. So I'll make sure to put the measurements that I did my zebra print down in the description box for you guys, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get that cut out. 
And after I got it cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and weed that. It weeded very simply. After I weeded it, I went ahead and put down my transfer tape. After my transfer tape is applied, I went ahead and came through and cut away any extra of that transfer tape and, and vinyl and all that right off the edge so that way it didn't get in my way when I went to apply it to my tumbler. And before I peel all that back off of its paper backing there, I went ahead and taped off my handle because like I said, we are doing a peekaboo method. So I'm gonna take some electrical tape and I'm going to tape off my handle so that way that doesn't get spray painted in the process. Now that my handle is all taped up, I'm ready to start applying my zebra template. So after I started to get going here, I noticed that there's just a little piece in my way. So I'm actually gonna take my scissors and cut that little bit of stripe away right off the edge there so that way my handle can fit snugly. If, if you guys are just doing this on, on a straight tumbler without a handle, you, you probably won't need to do this, but I'm just, I have to kind of trim stuff away to make it fit around my handle properly. Now that I have that all cut away, now I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that down as straight as I possibly can, and then I'm just going to burnish that around my tumbler. Now, I don't know if you guys do this already or not, but I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but because I know I'm gonna be doing a peekaboo, and I was curious to see how this would have looked with black, I went ahead and used a black vinyl, so now I know what it could possibly look like if I would have wanted to do black as well. So you guys can, can keep that in mind if you ever go to do projects, and you're like, hmm, I wonder what it would look like in this color. Just, just use vinyl to kind of go with that if you know you gotta peel it back anyways, you know what I mean? So <laughs> now that that's all wrapped around there, I'm just gonna take my scissors and start trimming some areas away so that way I can get this wrapped up underneath my handle. So I'm actually even going to be cutting portions of these stripes completely away and readjusting them here in a minute as well. So right here at my handle base, I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim that completely down all the way to the bottom so that way I can make that as flush as I possibly can and bend everything down underneath where I would like it to be. So after I got that all cut and, and uh, pushed underneath my handle there, now there's these stripes right underneath my handle portion here. So I'm gonna come through and I'm actually going to cut some of these away. So that way, like I said earlier, I can get them to line up just a bit better. So what I will do is I will completely remove that little patch of stripes right along the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and peel back my transfer tape and then come through and reapply them. So here's me just figuring out which stripes I do want to keep. So I'm just going to kind of line them up just a bit. I see that those two look pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut those apart from each other. And it's okay if you cut directly through. Just make sure that you go as clean as you possibly can against your decals. So that way there's no, you know, sharp edges to it. You want it to be nice and fluid and smooth with each other. There we go. I, I know what I'm kind of saying. And then you're just going to go ahead and line it up with each other, making sure that they line up as straight as they can. If they don't line up as straight as they can, then you can go ahead and come through with an X-Acto knife and kind of trim anything back that might be kind of poking up just a little bit. But these lined up, these lined up pretty well for me. So I went ahead and applied that. And I am going to peel away that little piece off the bottom too. Again, this is now, this is just nice and fluid and free forming for me. I'm just going to make sure that all these little lines are firmly pressed down. See if I want to add any more little stripes coming up off the top or anything like that and then it'll be ready to get it spray painted. Now before I tape up my bottom I just wanted to show you guys up close of what it looks like before I get it spray painted here. So here are all those pieces that we connected together. I fixed that one little piece next to the handle that wasn't completely connected to it. I added one more little stripe up off the top and there we go. Very clean. Can't even tell that we needed to do all that with it. <laughs> Now to go ahead and tape up my bottom, I'm gonna take some more electrical tape and I'm going to line it up as close as I possibly can to the bottom of that curve. So I have to hold it taut. And then as you see, the electrical tape really forms very well to the bottoms here. So you just have to stretch it and form it to make sure that you get the amount of glitter that you still want showing up. So you could even do like a half inch if you wanted to. If you didn't wanna do such a thin piece of it, you could you could do thinner than this, but or, or thicker than this of the bottom, you know? It's completely up to you guys because there is no right or wrong when it comes to making art. So now that that's all taped up, I'm gonna go ahead and take that outside and spray paint it with just some basic white spray paint. After I spray painted it my white, I went ahead and let that dry really well. And now we're ready to go ahead and remove all of our tape revealing that glitter peekaboo underneath. 
Now after I have all of my tape removed, I'm going to go ahead and put a thin coating of epoxy over top of my painted area. The reason why I do this is because I don't really like putting vinyls over top of paint. I just feel like sometimes they might lift, you know, and all that. So just as a precaution, I put a, a thin coating of epoxy over top of my painted areas and then we'll be ready to apply our last decal. So while that cures, we're going to go ahead and get that last decal made up over into our Cricut design space the first thing you want to do is go ahead and put in the name that you want I'm just gonna put mama Miami would have been cute too I didn't think of that until after I was all done though Miami and then South Beach in a pretty pretty swirly font and black or gold would have been very pretty like underneath it anyways <laughs> So after you get your name put in, you're going to go ahead and apply an offset to it. I like a kind of a thinner offset, so I brought it down to where you could see where the inside of like the A's, you could see how they would be cut out. So it was about 0 0.097, I do believe, that I, I did that with. So now that I have an offset and then I have my top portion, I'm showing you right here. Now I'm going to take that top portion and I'm going to duplicate that because the offset will be a rose gold vinyl. The other top portion will be a white vinyl. And then we're going to come through and make a zebra kind of teal print to go over top of this extra portion here. So over top of the white, we'll have that zebra look to it. So now you want to come through and you want to duplicate your zebra pattern that you have off to the side there that we used earlier. You're just going to go ahead and duplicate that. You're going to go ahead and unlock the sizing for your, your zebra print here. You just want to go up to the top and unlock. And you're going to get that down to about the same size as the name or, or font or quote or the that you're trying to do here. So just line it up about the same size as what you're trying to do. And I actually did flip it around because I liked the way it looked better whenever I flipped it upside down. So I flipped it upside down. And after I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight everything all together. And after you have everything all highlighted, you're gonna go down to your slice button there. You're gonna click on slice and then you'll have your kind of a zebra outline that you can apply over top. And that can be in any color you want. I chose a teal for mine. And there's a couple different ones you can choose. You can choose whichever one you like the best. So I'm actually going to change these into the teal color that I'm gonna be using. And then I kind of decide from there which one I think looks best over top. So when you have everything all separated here, so that portion there, the portion with the zebra look to it is going to be a teal vinyl. The offset will be done in a rose gold vinyl. And then the main mama, the one in black there is going to be done in a basic white vinyl. Now, after that cured, I did go ahead and sand up my rim just a little bit. I didn't show that, but you just want to sand it just a bit. And then you want to go ahead and wipe it down, wipe any debris down so that way it doesn't get stuck underneath our vinyl, especially that rose gold vinyl that we're going to be using. You need a nice smooth surface for that stuff. <laughs> So here I'm just putting my lid down to help me figure out where exactly I want my decal to go because I, I don't want it too far back onto the handle. You want it just so, so that way when you hold it, it's facing outright properly. So I just went ahead and put my lid on the top there to help me out, help me figure out where to place my decal. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my offset first here. Again, utilizing my lid, there's like a, a split down the center. There's like a seam down the center of the lid. If you guys have ever noticed that, you could use that to your advantage to help you get your decals nice and straight for you. So I'm just gonna use that lid to help me straight, straighten out my, my offset here. Then I'll just go ahead and come through and burnish it down very, very well. Then we'll come through with our main top portion here. We're gonna take our mama portion that we cut out in our white vinyl, and we're gonna get that lined up nice and straight over top of our rose gold vinyl. Now, when it comes to doing this portion, I, I take a look at the two A's there, at the center of those two A's, and I kind of line up the centers in that fashion, and it pretty much lines up for me the rest of the way for everything else, since I'm doing this all in one lettering rather than individually. So I'm just gonna take that and just burnish those down really well after I get that lined up. And for our last fun little layer here, I'm actually gonna be doing these individually, just so that way I know everything is lined up as straight as possible for myself. So with these M's here, I'm going to line them up right along the bottom and that helps me out with that. And again, with the A's, I focused on the center of my decal, making sure that everything was nice and straight and even. 
and I will just continue that process until that extra little zebra look is fully put down on all of my letters. Now once you are all done you just want to come through and make sure that everything is burnished down very well for yourself since we're using we did uh, three layers of vinyl there over top of each other you just really want to make sure everything is nice and smoothed down on top because if you don't it, it could once you put your epoxy over top it could make that vinyl want to pop up and we definitely don't want that so just make sure you take your time and burnish everything down very well before you add your finishing coats of epoxy and after you add your finishing coats of epoxy she is good to go whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.